use the headline to sell the benefits of reading your article. So that's why you see a lot of articles that are like five, five ways to do this or something like that, a how-to guide. You know, they're selling the benefit of why you should click on the headline and, um, and read the article. Thirdly, have fun with your headline. Use humour, alliteration, contemporary references, whatever you like really. Have a bit of fun and put your own personal stamp on it. Okay, you've identified your goals, done your research and decided on a headline. It's now time to put some meat on the bones. It's time to brainstorm. Grab a blank sheet of paper I always, and write down. I always do this by hand, but I suppose you could use a computer if you're one of those techie types, if you wish. But I do it by hand. I write down every piece of information I might want to put in the article. It doesn't have to be in any order. It doesn't have to even make any sense at this stage. It doesn't have to be legible to anyone other than yourself. Just get it all out there. Now comes the part where you decide on a structure for your article. You can choose a structure that I uh, outlined earlier with five paragraphs, or you can make your own. But it's important that you plan a structure and decide what each paragraph is going to be about. Once that's done, write a number next to every point on your brainstorming list. This number will correspond to the paragraph of the article that it's going to go in. You probably find at this stage that not everything on your list is going to make it into the final article. Now that's fine, but you now have a detailed article plan. Okay, right, we've done our planning. It's time to just write it. Fire up the computer, conquer the fear of the blank page. It's time to write your article. Write methodically, stick to the plan you've made. You know everything you need to say is on your plan, so work your way from top to bottom. Once you're in the zone, you find the words just flowing out of you. It shouldn't be material that you're unfamiliar with. You know all this stuff, so just let the writing take care of itself. Keep in mind the goals you set earlier. Does every sentence, every word even, serve your purpose? Does it help the, your reader understand what you're trying to say to them? Okay, well, job done. Now, only joking, you didn't really think that was the end. Here, in no particular order, are a few more tips on how to write effective articles that will delight your audience and fulfil your goals. Okay, firstly, keep your goal in mind. As I said before, Make sure you fulfil the mission that you set out on. And also, don't forget who you're writing for. Remember again, it's not you. That's what I have to tell my clients all the time. It's not you I'm writing for. Secondly, keep your audience interested. Your reader, they can click anywhere else, elsewhere, any time they like. So make sure that they don't. Make every sentence an advertisement for the next one. And stick to your plan and don't go off on irrelevant tangents. People today, they don't have the time or the inclination to persevere with an article that's hard to read, no matter how interesting or relevant it may be. So here are some tips on how to direct your reader from intro to conclusion without any mishaps. Firstly, be direct. I have a very direct style of writing, actually. I try to write like I speak. I abbreviate words. I don't use complicated or flowery language just for the sake of it. Next, avoid jargon and buzzwords. Just because a piece of industry terminology is part of your everyday language. It doesn't mean it's the same for your reader, so try to keep it simple. Buzzwords are fun to use, but date your writing quite quickly. So write something that's built to last. And finally, less is more. Write short sentences. Write short paragraphs. Three or four sentences per paragraph should be more than enough. Use the infinite space available. Okay, I'm going to get a bit technical now, but I think you guys can handle it. Use Use active voice. Try as much as you can to write in active voice. That means putting the verb before the subject in the sentence. So here's an example. The wrong way to say this is the cheese sandwich was eaten by John. The right way to say is John ate the cheese sandwich. And you'll see on the left here well, a popular slogan, what it would be like if it was in the passive voice. It would not be the same at all. Another one, don't, here are some words that copywriters don't use very much when they're writing. See if you can eliminate, eliminate these from your writing style too. Firstly, very. Very is a word that is just devoid of meaning. Use more des descriptive language instead. For example, say, instead of writing, it was very hot, write, it was scorching. Also, adverbs, and words that end in ly, if you can remember that from school. They take up space and they distract your reader. As, again, use more descriptive language. Next, many, few, frequently. 
Words like this, many, they're in the eye of the beholder. Where you can, use exact numbers. Instead of, I walk past a lot of sheep, walk past, I, um, say, I walk past 20 sheep. Next is that. When you write the word that, read the sentence in a sentence. Read the sentence back to yourself, removing the word that. If the sentence still makes sense, you don't need the word that, you can lose it. And lastly, this is my real bug bit. Could, can, may, up to. These are such wishy-washy words. Write with confidence. Don't say what problems your business can solve for your reader. Say what problems they will solve. Okay, my final tip. Don't worry. Look, nothing anyone ever does is perfect. So quit stalling, waiting for perfection. Here are a few more things you might be worried about when you're writing, that you don't need to. Don't worry about SEO. Although I write SEO for a good chunk of my time, I'm not an SEO expert at all. The SEO game changes so quickly, it's best left to the professionals. Unless you're an expert in SEO and you know what you're doing, just don't think about it. Write an article that serves your goal, that your audience will like, engage with, and want to share with their friends, and the SEO will kind of take care of itself. Finally, don't, uh, not finally, number two, don't, look, uh, don't worry about uh, spelling and grammar. And it breaks my heart to say this because I'm a fully badged up member of the grammar police, but no one really cares anymore. Your word processing program and there are other apps to correct your spelling and tidy up your grammar for you. Definitely proofread your article, at least a day after you've written it, so you, uh, so you have a bit of detachment there to make sure nothing has slipped through the net. However, even if something does slip through the net, I don't really think it's the end of the world. You can go back and correct it later anyway, that's the beauty of the internet. And lastly, don't worry about what people think. As long as you keep your audience and your goals in mind, anything goes. If you want to write something controversial, if you want to tell a joke, make a bold claim, just do it. Write with utter confidence, because if you don't, it shows. No one will have confidence in what you've written if you don't have confidence in what you write. Okay, so we've seen why you need fresh articles on your site on a consistent basis. We've talked about how to plan out an article and how to write one that effectively reaches your goals. You're now armed with all the information you need to write articles about anything at all. All you need now to do is get started. Practice, practice, practice. Adapt and develop your own system, one that works for you, and then reap the rewards. Refine your system so you can write anything. Next time you want to overhaul your website, or devise an ad, or put a landing page together, you can do it yourself. But I said at the end, always put a call to action in, and this is my call to action. There it is. Do you have time for all this? You have it in you to write anything about anything, but one thing you don't have is time. Your time may be better spent doing what you're best at than writing articles, and that's where I come in. I'm Mike the Writer, I write copy for startups, entrepreneurs and small businesses. I write anything about anything, consistently and accurately. Whatever you need, I can provide. I have subscription packages where I um, write copy for you, two or three articles, up to two or three articles every week, need be. But uh, I'm very flexible about meeting my clients' needs. And uh, if you'd like to talk to me more about this, please come and talk to me afterwards. I'd love to meet you. Thank you for listening, and uh, if anyone would like to ask me anything, fire away. Thank you very much. How is your client engagement like? Uh, uh, what, what's your, uh, how do you engage with your clients? On the online or you, uh, is it, uh, how do you come to know their uh, needs? Sure. Um, well, look, um, I meet most of my clients face to face, to be honest. That's how I like to do business. And I think when you write, I do a lot of, you call it ghost writing. So, you know, my name isn't on the article. It's it's, it's their name, so it's as if it's written by them. And I think if you're going to get a good feeling to write in their voice, so, so you know, someone you know would think you write it rather than paying me to write it, I think I'd have to get to know you for at least an hour or so to do that. But while we're there, we can brainstorm ideas, we can uh, you know, talk about what you're looking to achieve and, and work from there. So yeah, I, I get most of my clients through going to events such as this, going networking, and, um, and referrals, really. But yeah, I always try to, to meet them when I can, absolutely. Where are you located? Um, I'm based in Kingston, in South West London.
But um, I come up to London a lot. I've got a, I work at a co-working space in London, and um, yeah, I'm I'm very much London based. I do have some clients in the, I've got a client in the States, a client in Canada as well, but who I've, I've never met, but they seem pretty happy with what I, what I do as long as I remember to do, uh, to spell center, C-E-N-T-E-R. So, <laughs> there we go. Did you do any, do you have any experience with Indian entrepreneurs? Within India, I mean, launching articles for Indian. I have got one. Um, I've got a guy who, well, he, he's he's in the southwest London, but he's obviously of Indian origin. He's an optician, and um, it, he's um, developed this. Uh, it's like a screen protector for your iPhone or your iPad, which totally filters out the blue light. Which I'm sure people will know more about this than I do, but blue light's so harmful for your eyes and also your sleeping patterns. And this um, screen protector that he's, uh, he's invented totally filters out all the, all the blue lights. I've got, I did his website. I, I wrote a bit for the back of his packaging earlier this week. So yeah, I have got a bit of, took a bit of uh, experience in that field, yes, absolutely. Cool. Thank you very much.